and welcome to the NBA Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Killers assemble! Yeah! Yeah! And also joining us is Tara. Well, who's that handsome looking Pokemon? Oh wait, that's me, just looking in the mirror. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So in today's episode, we are going to review the Legends of Magic Annual 2018. And in this annual, the pillars of Old Equestria face a new danger that tests their skills as a team. Avengers assemble! Ta-da! Yeah, until someone snaps their fingers. Oh, God, no. <laughs> so, anywho, um, let's get into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said comic? Well, it was a fun annual, but in terms of furthering the story, I didn't find it did a lot. I kind of viewed it as a victory lap. A celebration of the entire Legends of Magic series and how far it had come, and what I thought was a really good story. Little did I know, however, that it also had laid the groundwork for Nightmare Nights. Oh, really now? Really? But I shan't go into detail just yet. All right, then. And Tara, what do you think of said comic? I mean, I don't read a, the comics a lot, but this was quite interesting to me, and I didn't know at times where it was going, and seeing all these new creatures that aren't even in the show, like that, um, I guess it's a timber bear, or at least it looks like one to me, uh, it ended off pretty well. I can't really say much, because I only went through it once, and I don't read the comics a lot, but it was it interests me. Hmm, all right, all right. No one reads the comics. Why does no one read the comics, Norman? Uh, it's because it's one of those things where it's not really well publicized and stuff, and not many people know that of its existence. Really sucks. Oh, the shame, the tragedy, mm-hmm. the comeuppance. But still, but still. As for me, this comic was a lot of fun. It's a, whatchamacall this, uh, another story of the adventure of the pillars before Stygian does his project and whatnot. And we get to see the brotherhood of Stygian and Rockhoof. Yay, much awesomeness. I always like those two. But anywho, uh, if you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go read it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the comic. And well, we start off with the adventures with Star Swirl asking the guards to put a bunch of mirrors around. What? He's got a vanity project going on. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah. Or he just likes to stare himself in the mirror. Yeah, from multiple angles. But no, no, no. You know, honestly, um, Star Swirl here has created a, what you call this, portal to uh, the worlds. And to go through them is via the mirrors. Remember that EQG thing? <laughs> yeah, it started here. <laughs> yeah, right. Actually, that was more like Torterra's uh, idea. I could just see Star Swirl staring at those mirrors. Would you F you me? <laughs> I'd F you me. I mean, you live while you're young, right? I mean, he's old, but, I mean, you know, you gotta admire oh, yourself from time to time. You're only as old as you feel. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, uh, little Wuna comes in and spoils all the fun. And yeah, with her appearance, suddenly shadow creatures come in. And this does not have to do with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep. Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> now where's the so. Dark Magician? <laughs> I don't know. Where's the Dark Magician girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, I prefer, uh, the, ma- <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer anywho, the Magician girl over the original Dark Magician. I like the Dark Magician better. But anywho, um, Star Soul says you shall not pass and zaps the shadow creatures and sends them away to the mirror wall. Uh... Princess Celestia zaps those shadow creatures too, and Princess Luna bubbles them. Yay! Bubble attack works. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. My bubbles. Yeah, and with that, they try and send those shadow creatures away, but one bonks Star Swirl behind and pushes him into a mirror or makes a mirror land on him. And he is transported to a parallel universe. And with that, the girls panic and they get captured by the shadow creatures and dragged into the shadow realm where they have to play card games. On motorcycles! You wish. <laughs> hey. uh, maybe they're at the cell games. Presented by Hita. <laughs> uh, 
but in another part of Equestria, we get to see Rock Hoof's old town, Northern Equestrian, the home village of the Mighty Helms. And it seems that there's a work together with the Cloudsdale Royal Legion. And we get to see that Flash Magnus is in charge while uh, Captain or Commander, what was his name again, Silver? Ironhead. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ironhead is on vacation. and In a swamp. <laughs> hey, those critters are nice now. Like, they get to come down and Iron Hoof or whatever his name is uh, gets to relax and be around nice creatures for once. And he doesn't have to do much. And catch malaria. Air day? Hey, look, look, it, look, it don't care how peaceful the critters are now. It's a swamp. <laughs> it's a swamp. It's gross and plague ridden. And there are snakes. You're not going to get a lawn chair out and just sip, sip away. Honestly, I don't even know why you'd pick a swamp for a nice vacation. There's a yeah. lot of other places to go to. Like, you could go to Las Pegasus. <laughs> or Ponyville. I had Ponyville a swim. Or how about the mumps? Maybe he'll feel really rested as he's recovering from the mumps. <laughs> but anywho, as Flesh Magnus is in charge now, uh, he tells... We're all gonna correct? die. <laughs> You're gonna cry. Flash Magnus is in charge. We're all gonna die. <laughs> but anywho, Flash says that, hey, uh, we're on a joint training regiment with the Royal... Uh, the, with the Mighty Helms, and put your hoof together for your training for today, Captain Stella. Yay! Much awesomeness. And Captain Stella says, okay, you scallywags, you have to fly through the volcano and stuff. And I'm going to pick the fastest of you lots. And somehow Flash Magnus gets to be in the line, even though he is in charge. Like, what? But who's in charge? It's Flash Magnus, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Flash Magnus has to participate in the race. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Heaven forbid you actually have to do the training. What's that saying about a good leader? They'll, they never ask someone to do anything they wouldn't be willing to do themselves. Yep, true. <laughs> true. That and well, uh, it seems that Flash has to do it too and says, I'm acting captain. I shouldn't be. And Stella here does the whole, oh, I didn't realize you're a chicken. Pock. Oh, no, no. Cheep, 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 cheep. <laughs> is that a reference to Back to the Future? <laughs> And meanwhile, Scootaloo is in the future. She gets this twinge of, I'm angry and I don't know why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but so Flash says, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll play it your way. I'll play it your way. I'll show you why I'm the fastest in Equestria. Except he's not. I guess I am. Hey, he actually admitted that in the middle of uh, Legends of Magic. He said, speed's not really my thing. True, but I'm fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Hey, fast. Hey, fast. Hey, fast. Hey, fast. Uh, but still, uh, once they're on their marks and ready, and Sarah says go, uh, Flash zooms speedily. And One Pony mentions, gosh, I forgot how fast he actually is. Stating that, hey, even though speed is not Flash Magnus's thing, he still can do it. You can do it. <laughs> So while the Pegasus are training and racing, we get to see the other pillars like Rock Hoof and Mage doing their things, like talking, like they're just talking and commenting on how much Stygian and Miss Main like to argue, <laughs> but they argue is very polite. <laughs> I kind of wish we had such arguments, most polite arguments in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't see the such polite arguments these days. Except when you're in Canada. I'm not your friend, guy. Don't call I'm me. not your guy, buddy. <laughs> I'm not your buddy, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but, I, think uh, I, I think I broke Norman. That's it. Oh, wait. This is this is Norman's first breakdown of 2019. Yeah, <laughs> but anywho, back to Magnus. We get to see him fly and take the obstacle course. And he goes into the volcano and flies into it and stuff 
suddenly he noticed that hey Sam is there. Sam is um kind of cute. Like she has her pom poms, uh giving cheer and providing encouragement and whatnot and be and to be there just in case somebody gets hurt. Sorry, but did you call her Samus? Sam. Senembla. Short. Some ne- some Nambula. I thought you were looking for like Metroid. <laughs> yeah, I kinda sound like you call her Samus. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good too, right? And so that that wouldn't be a bad thing. It's just like na 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 na. <laughs> but anywho, um Flash gets interrupted by Star Swall, who creates a portal and faints. And he almost dies in the lava, except Sam and Flasher saves him and goes to, I'm assuming this is Rock Hoof's abode, and Major gives a potion to Star Swirl, giving him some energy and whatnot. And he explains about the situation that the princesses are kidnapped by some shadow being and whatnot, and I have to go and save them. And Stygian says, yo, we're here to help. Like, ask us to help. We can help you. And Star Soldier says, no, I I can't take care of this and stuff. And Stygian just blows his top saying, you don't have to ask. That's the thing. The world is in danger. The princess is in danger. And he steps up and everybody agrees with him. They want to help. I like Stygian. Stygian's best. Well, it's kind of funny. He's uh, it's both him at his best and, but also foreshadowing his worst. Oh, true that. Is true mm-hmm. that. I, I mean, he's standing up for what's right, but he is being super de duper hostile. Why not? Because Starsul has been a jerk to him, and now that the now because of his carelessness, the princes are in danger. So I don't blame the guy. Well, I I say you can stand up for what you believe in, but real strength means you don't have to be a jerk to someone. Mm. I mean, s- sincerity co- basically is solid and comes from within. You don't have to insult someone to feel strong or to stand up for it. You just do it. You say, no, we're coming with you. End of story. And Boom. that's what that's he all did. got to say. And that's what he did here. Uh, there's no... Oh, no, he blew, he blew his top. True, but at the same time, too... Starswell here says, I'm going and I don't need anybody's help. And thank you. Good day, my friends. And with that, like, yo, you came here because you needed help. And you're saying that you didn't need our help? No, that's crap. You, it's clearly, we're here. We don't care. We're following you. And then when they go to the actual mirror, Stygian is still, uh, chomping at Starswell's head. Yeah, be- <laughs> but before that, um, Rockhoof tries to go through the mirror and hits his head on the mirror. Uh, yeah. And I like Rockhoof. He's he's my favorite of the pillars. Yep. He's a he's an odd goof. Yes. But anywho He's like uh, the goofball of the group. Mm-hmm. Uh but still um with that Starswell here says, Oh somehow the other side they block us off from going in and stuff. And yeah, I see what you mean here, Silver, that Star uh, Stygian here is a bit snappy with Starswell. A bit snappy in the way that a piranha likes to take a wee bite. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, and... a, a wee bit, a skosh. So anywho, Starswell says, no problem, we don't really need the mirror. I know the spell, but it's going to be a bit unstable and whatnot. So um, I'm going to do the spell. That's the spell and sets up a team where, okay... Stygian and Rockhoof are on one team, the ladies are on another team, and Flash and Starswell are on a team of their own. And they go through the mirror and discovers that this place looks strange, doesn't feel right. Yep, they're not wrong. <laughs> they're about to see how not wrong they really are. True, 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 true. Although visually speaking, I like the preponderance of green. It's just the there's a certain shade of green that stops looking natural and looks more acidic. I think they get just the right green balance to make this place look kind of sickly rather than lush. True. They do have the tree leaves all purple-like, and he's got the... I I don't even know if that's, like, pur- pink or... I mean, pink. What am I saying? Um, I Purple slime, or I guess those are leaves hanging on the tree branches? Um, I think that's moss. 
Moss. Moss? That is how you say it? Moss? Yep. Some, some sort of moss or... Uh, was it lichen? No, uh, lichen's a different word. Uh, moss, well, moss. It's a strange kind of moss. Yeah. No, because if you think about it, most of the greenery here are changed with pink. So it does make sense there in a strange way, yes? True. Ah, yes. Uh, oh, no, lichen. A simple, slow-growing plant that typically forms on low, crust-like, leaf-like, or branching growth on rocks, walls, and trees. So, yeah, there is such a thing as lichen. I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. But anywho, Rockhoff pulls the Jin aside and says, are you right? And she says, what do you mean? Chewing off Star Swirl's head was noticed by everyone. And Rockhoff just says, like, you had a bit of a blow-up at old Star, Star Swirl back there. And yeah, you you can see the anger that Stitchin is facing right now because oh, just because he knows magic and blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I would actually wouldn't mind hearing Stitchin make those sounds. <laughs> yeah. He has a British accent, so you know it. Uh, everything sounds cooler with a British accent. For rum, for rum, tea, crumpets, and <laughs> it's a rum, a rum. Oh, boys. But anywho, yeah, he apologizes to Rockwolf about it and says he's being oversensitive about it. So, uh, Star Swirl gathers everyone, says that, alright, um, first step is to cast a spell to track the princesses and whatnot and make sure that everyone knows what to do. And Magnus asks, uh, will that work? And he says, yep. It worked the last time. And and Meteor says, What? This is the first time? What kind of babysitter are you? It's a fair question. Makes me wonder if he's like Mario and the princesses, the princesses are like Peach. I just figure that, like, there's something written on a princess's crown that says, Kidnap me. It's like s- some really old prank that the forces of darkness took literally. I'm surprised the uh, Lightning Bliss hasn't been kidnapped yet. <laughs> oh, well, she's, boy. she's not technically a princess. It's true. <laughs> Well, then again, you know, she would be kidnapped. She'd probably be kidnapped by Pharynx. Oh, she'd be kidnapped by me for my shipping <laughs> dungeon. I'll lock her in a tower and ship her with whoever first unlocks it. Oh, was. wow. But anywho, um, Sarswell casts a spell and nobody noticed anything. But Sarswell just explains that the spell uh, doesn't really work until you're close to the vicinity and whatnot. But anywho, uh, let's split the party up. No, you never split the party. <laughs> Never split the party! <laughs> and Steve just says, You want to split the party up? But we have no idea where they are. D- d- you fool! <laughs> Honestly, why would you split the party up in a forest? I know. Foolish, fool of foolishness. But, it, okay. Star Wars here does make sense because we need to track the princesses. If we scatter our chances of finding the princesses are high. So once we get the track, we send a magical flare. Makes sense. But the problem is you're uh, you're in t- enemy territory and anything could happen. You could have a evil clone duplicate of yourself take over your place and nobody would know. Speaking from experience, I guess. You remember the episode where Ch- Chrysalis came along and our ponies were dumb to not notice it. There was a lot of stuff going <laughs> <Yeah>. on there. <laughs> no, but still, um, th- that is a scenario of, that is an example of a scenario that might happen. So, yeah. They split up and Rockhoof and Stygian here gets to talk a bit more and stuff and suddenly something attacks them and oh my, it's a lot of bugs. What do they call them? Electro bug? I don't think they've ever been named. They're not Twitter minds. Yeah, they're not Twitter minds. I, I think what? Electro buzz? Something like that. So, well, that's the po- Pokemon fan. <laughs> yeah. Is there an electric bug? Yes, sign? there is. <laughs> actually, of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff about Pokemon. Yeah, but anywho, so oh, actually, I do have one quick thing to say though. Mm-hmm. As they're hiding in the shadows, if you if you kind of look closely and tilt them upside down, they kind of look like uh, evil happy faces in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's evil. We're happy to be evil. <laughs> so, yeah, those... Elect- I'm going to call them Electrobuzz. So Electrobuzz comes in and 
Buzz Rockhoof here. Oh no, that's not good. On the next page, we get to see um, the ladies try and, well, find the princesses. And Miss Main here mentions that this place is not right. Like, this place is pure evil. There's something wrong with the place. Like, the forest is telling me that it's angry and they're trying to stop them and stuff. And they come across, what do they call this? Timber bears? Was it? Lumber yeah, lumber bears. bears. Oh, I'm a lumber bear and I'm okay. I'm all all night and I'm all all day. <laughs> so, anywho, yeah. Um, the lumber bears attack the ladies and, yeah. They, they, <laughs> let's just say that them, them ladies know how to fight. No argument. They, <laughs> what is it? Sonambula. Decapitation. Fatality. Yeah, and somehow Mage, Mage's potion bag gets ripped and all her potions get mixed together and that's not good because it blows and all of her potions are in one bag and that's not good. That's not good at all. I bet Michael Bay would be very proud though. Oh, yay. Explosions. <laughs> yeah, and one bear survives and tries to do a sneak attack and... Miss Main stops the bear and tries to calm it down. It goes well for a few seconds and bear does self-destruct. It's super effective. And crushing Miss Main's spirits. Yeah. And yeah, Miss Main is sad because he, she couldn't save him and stuff. And we go to the next party, which is Star Soul and Flash. And Flash says like, you know, if I could fly, I could find the princesses faster. And... Star Soldier says that's not a good idea because we got no idea how evil this place is and maybe there's an evil force that might attack you if you're being spotted and whatnot and yay spotted they do because evil creature monster attacks Flash and confronts Star Soul saying hello Star Soul my old friend and this pony shadows I like the green on Ooh, it. why I th- because it makes him okay. Pony of Shadows in the show, pure black, mm-hmm. threatening a little alien symbiote. But this one, it's darkness and unnatural fire. Ooh. It's Maleficent. It's like the color scheme reminds me of Maleficent when she transformed into the dragon. Ah, yes, that's true. That's true. That color scheme. That color scheme is there. And you mentioned the unnatural fire of green. Well, if you play a lot of King of Fighters, you remember Ash Crimson. Who is being erased by timeline? Yes, so he doesn't really exist anymore. Ah, that—that's the thing with reboots. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Although, just I think that maybe instead of a green flame, maybe it should have been red flame. You know, red and black is a nice color. True, but for this one, I think green is awesome because it reminds me of Shigo. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That, that is good. That, that True, is good. Speaking of Shigo, doesn't help that uh, is now a live action Kim Possible. <clears throat> um, anyway, as we <laughs> <laughs> everything's better with live action. No, the Lion King. <laughs> yeah, oh, I just, oh, let's a... just take a quick moment. I gotta say something here. People are saying that you know it's a live action remake, but everything is all CGI, so it's not really live action. It's just, it's still animated, but just CGI. It is not live action. I know. I agree with you. It's an uncanny valley thing. It's not even uncanny valley silver. It's not. It's not live action. The problem, okay, on a tangent here, folks, because this has to be said now, if not later. Because here's the thing: live action is when you have a living, breathing creature or person acting in front of a camera. You could say the Lego movie was quote-unquote live-action. It didn't win an animation award for having Will Ferrell in the movie, so yeah. But the Lion King, people who said that it's live-action can go eat a spinach. Yes. Oh, Norman, what language? Oh. Ah. But anywho, let's get back on track. So the ponies of the Pony of Shadows, this green-black creature thingy, much... Scariness tries to battle with Starswell, and it seems that Starswell is having a hard time. Yes. So, on the next page, Rockhoof is getting zapped, and yay, <laughs> Stijin, uh, sorry, um, Rockhoof says, Stijin, please help. And 
yeah, he 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 zaps one of the bugs and it seems that the bug is kind of pissed off and says uh, and tries to zap Stygian and Stygian says no please don't shock me and you know what bug doesn't shock him that's surprising sorry that's shocking uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. but just so you, I I did a little checking on uh, the show there are flash bees flash. In Equestria. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's uh, from uh, A Health of Information. Mm. But are these the flesh bees? Well, they seem like very dark versions mm, of it. Probably. But uh, one of those things that we don't know. But anywho, Sijin says, Hey, Rokov, did you see that? They didn't shock me when I asked them nicely not to shock me. <laughs> and Rokov says, la di da that's nice of you. No, <laughs> let me try it. It says, yo, Vermin, stop shocking me. Well, that's the problem. He didn't ask them nicely. You don't, you don't use varmints. <laughs> and not you don't yell at them conversation. either. It's like, civilized people do not use varmints. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and Roku says, nope, it didn't work. And Stygian says, um, let me try. And it works. Blimey. That is nuts. They use blimey. <laughs> I'm just saying blimey. <laughs> just because. Go oh, blimey, oh, governor. Blimey. <laughs> bip, 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 cheerio and all that. What? So, anywho, um, did you notice that, hey, um, this creature listened to me and that's a bit creepy and uh, fascinating yet creepy. Uh, I do wonder why. And Rockhoff just says, you know what? Um... Why not ask them to show us the direction of the princess? And Stygian asks them, and they do follow his instructions. And they find the trail of the princess. Yay! You could say they know the way. <laughs> do you know the way? I can hear the groans of pain of the audience in the distance. <laughs> it is a delicious sound. It's very delicious. <laughs> sing, <laughs> sing for us your symphony of tears. But a... Eh. Who, um, they found the tracking spell that Star Swirl casts, and Stygian lights up the flare, signaling the other ponies that hey, they found the princess. While the battle between the Shadow Pony and Star Swirl um, carries on, they notice the flare, and the Shadow Pony says, "I better get back to the princess because they're not ready yet." And yeah, they both follow the location and find the princesses being groomed. Oh no. This just reinforces my view that the forces of darkness are just very aggressive cosplayers. <laughs> oh my goodness. This does raise a topic for discussion. The Pony of Shadows says that they're going to become Daybreaker and Nightmare Moon. Mm-hmm. He knows them by name. This is something I talked about when it was just Luna getting kidnapped in the first issue of Legends of Magic. When you name something, it's it's kind of cementing its identity. So the fact that the forces of darkness know what these two could become before even they're old enough or have developed that emotional baggage feels a little forced. Maybe a little too much reliance on destiny. See, here, here's the problem with uh, Daybreaker. Daybreaker is not real in terms of what it is. Okay, here, here's the thing. Um... I'm just saying this via what we know of the series because Daybreaker is in a dream. But people would comment that dreams are a subconscious of our consciousness. And that could be the evil version of Princess Celestia. And uh, it, it gets murky in this situation where this Pony of Shadow is predetermining the outcome of the evil versions of the ponies, which... Is so nuts. It, it raises a lot of questions. Well, and unfortunately, more questions than answers. Harumph, I Indeed. say. Oh, wait, gotta be British. Gotta be British. Hey, what's up, <laughs> huh? Uh, to chip cheerio. But anywho, we get to see the creatures trying, uh, grooming in the ponies and whatnot. And Shadow Pony comes here and says, Stay away from my little pony. I have a collection of play sets. These are the expensive ones, especially the little blue one. And Rockhoof says, I gotta ask a question. 
What kind of big bad pony kidnapped little Philly, yo? That's not right. That ain't right at all. Oh, just am. And they banter, and the Pony of Shadow just says, What does the Pony of Shadow say? Like, in a bridge version. In the abridged version? Um, abridged version? No, I mean like um, a bridge version of what he's saying. It's really long for me to... Oh, basically, I want to turn them into Nightmare Moon and Daybreaker, and then I'll command the most destructive forces. It's too bad that the Celestian Luna in my dimension got killed. Oh, Rockoff, you're here. You're the only guy with whom I shared a bromance. But you had to have an accident at Volcano. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. And with that, uh, Pony of Shadow says, Who's the little pipsqueak? I don't recognize him. Ah, no matter. I don't care. So, like two of you against me and my army, what what can you do? We got a Hulk. <laughs> Not really. We have a somnambula. Oh, that's... <laughs> me! <laughs> that's, 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 oh, no. Because... That would be fantastic. Because the other ponies arrive and they're about to kick butt. I'm sorry, following this through to its logical conclusion. So, villain appears before Celestia. I have an army. We have a pinky pie. <laughs> Party! Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, Pony of Shadow says, Haha, just like old time. But I am a stronger now, so let's fight. And so, they fight and stuff because they're, about, they're, they're ready to throw down. And uh, Rockhoff just mentions that the big bad creature doesn't know Stygian. And... Uh, somehow Stygian can command the bugs. So I think you and Stygian here should work together to save the princesses. So that they do. It's like a big fight scene, but he makes the hundred yard dash. Yeah, big awesome fight happens and he goes to the princesses and whatnot. And Stygian and the Pony of Shadows have a rumble. The Pony of Shadows tells one of the rock golem thingy to grab the princesses and run away, but before he could say go, Stygian says throw them to Star Swirl, and he does. And going long, Star Swirl grabs the princesses and they escape through a portal and manage to run away from the big bad shadow pony. Run away! Run away! Run to the hills! Keep running! Run, forest, run! Dun, 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 dun! So, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> they manage to Get away from the big bad shadow pony and stuff. And everybody is very hype. Everybody is saying awesome things. Like they're congratulating themselves. And Sunimbala says, how did you manage to do that, Stygian? How do you make uh, his own creatures betray him and stuff? And Stygian says, you know, I got no idea. I'm high on adrenaline right now. And I'm shaking myself right now. And Magna says, you were brave out there, Stygian. And I know something about bravery. <laughs> yeah. And it seems that the girls are just passed out. And Starshul tells Rockhoof to destroy the mirror. And Rockhoof smash! Yeah, yeah. And Starshul here just brings the princesses to their bedroom and whatnot. Uh, but now Rockhoof has seven years bad luck. Then that's true. I do wonder if Rockhoof is going to be stuck in a... Limbo state for a thousand years. Hmm. Nah. It's superstitions. I don't know. I mean, is it seven years subjective bad luck or seven years actual across the time? Because otherwise he might have ducked out of that trouble. Probably. But anywho, Rockhoof here and Stygian have their bromance and whatnot and says that let's go eat some boat of oats and stuff so yay much fun and in the shadow realm the pony of shadows says stygian 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 where do i know that name before how could it be that i forgotten myself i don't recognize myself have i changed that much and it's revealed that the pony of shadow is stygian <gasps> oh no like ass the end <laughs> to be continued Oh my gosh, this would be a totally shocking development if we hadn't seen it at the show. Oh no. no, no. And episode and comic ends. Yes, yes. Oh wow. So yeah, if comic ends. I, I don't know what to say. Um, Silver, you mentioned something about this being related to Nightmare Nights? Yes, because the dream which Stygian, where Luna encounters Stygian and is in turn baited into the returning to this dark dimension 
is Stygian dreaming about this rescue effort? Hmm. He's dreaming about this climactic battle here. Now, at the time when this comic came out, I didn't know about that. So I just thought, okay, this is this comic does a lot to show the downfall of Stygian, but it's mostly a victory lap of uh, having 12 issues devoted to the Pillars of Equestria. Little to no mention of the main six. You know, uh, there was Sunburst uh, reading the stories and sometimes a cameo by modern day ponies, but mostly it was just the Pillars. Mm-hmm. But then you get Nightmare Nights, and it opens where this one ends. I thought, oh, that's clever. I like that. I need to double check then, because I, I kind of forgot the intro for Nightmare Nights. I know they set up, and we'll get to that comic soon enough. But we have other comics that we need to review first. So, yeah, there, there's there's more there first. So, yeah, whatever. And, yeah, this comic here is an interesting setup. It, it does raise a lot of questions for Nightmare Nights. It does. It also shows Stygian's sort of desperation to be a hero like the others. As they're uh, fleeing the Dark Dimension and Rockhoff says, Oh, I, I doubt this will be the last time you get to be a hero. Stygian says, I'd do anything to do it again. Which really, really is a pretty bold statement of how he's going to fall. But also, you just realize, dude, for this to happen, two princesses had to get kidnapped. Would you wish that on them? Yeah, true, but the, here's the thing. Stygian is born in a... <laughs> let's just say Stygian is born in the wrong timeline. Because if he was in Ponyville, <laughs> saving ponies, that would be a daily occurrence. Daily double. You know what? Let's head into final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, I really enjoy it. Uh, when it first came out, I was like, okay, that it's fun. It's it's a good story. It doesn't really add anything new that we, we didn't already know. But I enjoy the relationship between Rockhoof and Stygian. Sort of a big brother, little brother uh, friendship. And seeing Stygian get mad at Star Swirl. He's one of the few ponies in Equestria who could probably call him out for being so narrow-minded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But at the same time, you see the weaknesses building and Stygian's fall is is set up. So I really enjoyed it. I love the Pony of Shadows with a little bit of green to make him look more unnatural. And this is one of the few times the ponies have dealt with a cl- with a classical uh, fantasy creature like an ogre. All right. I mean, we haven't seen... There was, what, a cave troll in The Return of Queen Chrysalis? But since then, no ogres, no trolls. True, 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 true. But yeah, they're really enjoyable. Uh, I will say, I remember reading on the forums in Equestria Daily that there are there are some folks who are frustrated that this starts with yet another princess abduction. It is true. We've tapped that well pretty heavily. Well, if that's the case, they might be bored with Mario then. <laughs> How do you think Mario feels? Oh, I wonder if the princess is going to get a kidnap today. It's a day ending in the Y, so I should make that a safe bet. I'm an incredible Italian stereotype. And then suddenly Balzette comes. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> uh, it's me. I'm all confused. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so yes, anywho. Uh, Tara, what do you think? Well, as someone who doesn't really read the comics a lot, I enjoyed this one. With all with all these uh, interesting creatures that aren't really interested in the show, and like how I like the comedy too, like especially that one part where Metal Books is like, we had a bare time getting here, and Sanambu was like, "Ha, huh, I get it." <laughs> and then, like like I said, how there's the ogres and the um, is it lumber bears? I think it was. Yeah, lumber bears. Mm-hmm. And then the bugs is like, "Where are all these in the show? We don't even get a lot of interesting creatures in the show." And then the ending with uh, the, uh, another stitchy ending, The Pony of Shadows, is like, well, geez, that would have been interesting to see in the show as well. We might as well start reading the comics now. Yeah, the, the comics are an alternative storyline that is a lot of fun. Uh, with the alternate stitchian, it raises a lot of questions. That's all I have to say. But still, I, I agree with you, man. And as for me, this comic was a lot of fun to read. And... Like Silver mentioned, this is just the victory lap for the pillars. They they have their adventures. They we get to see what they're doing after their what you call this adventure with the pillars, one or another and whatnot. And we get to see Stygian being the hero this time. Yay, much awesomeness. But yeah, 
like I mentioned before, uh, another student does raise a lot of questions, and yeah, I I don't know what to say, man. Like the whole Nightmare Nights issue, it raises a lot of questions for this one. But anywho, yeah, I, I think that's done. That's, that's that's done. So Silver, um, anything else to add before we put a pin on Legends of Magic? Flash Magnus has gotten to do a lot more than Flash Sentry, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the bromance between uh, Stygian and Rockhoof is always welcomed. That's why Rockhoof's my fave. I like the Big Brother st- style. <laughs> so, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, we're in the 2019s. Couldn't have happened fast enough, in my opinion. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Well, you know, it's funny. We did an episode talking about F.U., and it's funny how that phrase can lead to the end in friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next week we'll be exploring the world of miscommunication and misfriendships by with the title of uh, End of Friends, like what, Season 8, Episode 17, End of Friends, yeah. So, that episode involves Rainbow Dash and Rarity. Yeah, much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee this caused no frustration amongst the fans. Nope, none whatsoever. Nope, nope, nope. I can yeah, feel the it's joy. Harmless. <laughs> I, I can feel the joy in that episode. Everybody's going to say a happy good time. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. I am frustrated already. <laughs> so, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmvshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. Same goes on DeviantArt. Just do a search and you shall find me. If you search for After the Fact or Silver Quill on YouTube, I shall appear. And every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, you'll find an editorial or a comic review by yours truly. Nice, 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 nice. Those are always good to check out. One a few things that expands on what we do here. And it's written, so if you don't like to hear my voice, you can always read what Silver has to say. Yay. <laughs> and Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can always find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, or Twitter under the name Tortera1324. Or if you just start up your internet and Google's the first page you go to, you can just type in there under Tortera1324. I'm pretty sure you'll find me on Google search. Yay, yeah, you're Google popular. <laughs> So anyway, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on FunnyBoodLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also do subscribe to the Review and Discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. You'll get to hear us on those platforms via mobile. Yay! I heard YouTube doesn't really do the whole, oh, turn off screen while listening to podcasting. Mm. So anyway, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, Jeffrey, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Now it's time for me to tell you about the electric type Pokemon. So we're <laughs> oh, that's much fun. Yes, <laughs> I'm paying total attention to you. <laughs> Don't mind the loud buzzing you hear. <laughs> Shoo! 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 Pikachu? What am I saying? This. Pro- there's probably a there's probably a Pokemon that sounds like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, isn't it Pikachu? <laughs> Wait, it's the ship between Snorlax and Pikachu. Snorachu. <laughs> Dear gods.